Hello and welcome to Exploring Axon, a podcast where we discuss Axon and its ecosystem. I am your host and Axonic developer advocate, Sarah Tori. We receive a lot of questions about set-based validation and sagas in Axon framework. So today I spoke with my colleague, Yvonne Seely, who explained these topics thoroughly to me. I hope you enjoy this episode and let's have a listen. Hi, Yvonne. Good morning. How are you? Hi, Sarah. Good morning. I'm fine. How about you? Doing great. Thank you so much for joining me today to talk about some really cool, interesting topics. Um, so today we're going to cover the topics of set-based validation and Saga. But before we get to that, can you tell me a little bit about yourself and your background? And if you don't mind sharing with everybody, where are you? <laughs> yes, of course. I'm Yvonne Seely and I live in a little town near Amsterdam. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been living near Amsterdam for almost all my life, and I've been there to uh, I've been to high school in Amsterdam. Yeah, and I hear it's beautiful over there, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. Um, yeah, and after high school, I didn't really know what to do uh, mm-hmm. as a profession, so I did yeah. a couple of uh, jobs, and then mm-hmm. I saw this uh, vacancy at a governmental organization, um, yeah. also uh, in the Amsterdam area. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and that was about, um, yeah, you can learn everything about IT. And I thought maybe yeah. IT is something that I would like to do. Mm-hmm. So I started there um, behind a big mainframe and um, I, I, I really learned a lot. I've been working for that governmental organization uh, for almost 20 years. Oh, wow. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> yes. And uh, yeah, I, I learned a lot about uh, coding. I learned COBOL. Mm-hmm. I learned Java. I, I learned wow. a lot about uh, how to do big projects. Like mm-hmm. I did a project uh, to do the conversion from Gilder to Euro. Wow. In the beginning of the 2000s. That's a story to tell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And great. Yeah. After 20 years, I thought mm, maybe now it's good time to to go look in somewhere else what mm-hmm. is life besides uh, this this organization yeah and then i started as a java developer mm-hmm. at an e-commerce uh, uh, company yeah and worked there for four years mm-hmm. and after that i saw uh, a vacancy at trifork mm-hmm. uh, trifork being uh, the the founder of um, exonic it yeah, was just yeah. started from uh, yep. from trifork the mothership yes the mothership mm-hmm. and <laughs> Yeah, I had a really nice talk with Allard and uh, some mm-hmm. other guys over there. And so I started at Trifork mm-hmm. and did some projects at Roadguard and later on uh, for an uh, American uh, company Yeah, uh, and learned about Axon. That, did you know about uh, CQRS event sourcing, anything like that? Or that was, that was all new to you? That was all new to me. Um, like at every company, I learned something. <laughs> And yeah, of course, of course. It, it's it's a really good company when you actually get to learn something, right? Which is, uh, yeah, what we're doing at Axon, yeah. which is awesome. And yeah. after uh, some years uh, of experience with Axon, I am now uh, providing trainings, uh, doing support, uh, working on the product, uh, also working on a SaaS solution for Axon Server. So, yeah, there's a lot to do. This is, yeah, your background is really, really interesting. And it's really neat to see that, that you gained all of this experience because you're one of the most knowledgeable people I know in, in the field. <laughs> it's, it's really great to, to hear that you, you learned all of this from doing all different uh, experiences with your jobs and previous projects and things like that. So that's really, really Thank uh, you. great to hear. So um, let's talk about this. Uh, topic that basically comes up almost every week, right? Which is set-based validation. And we have a lot of questions about that. Uh, let's let's talk about that a little bit. Um, so one of the things that we hear a lot from the users and also we, we discuss a lot with amongst our teams is that, so if, you know, for instance, if you have an email address in a user account aggregate, how do we make sure that it's unique? Or for instance, if you, Uh, have the email addresses that are only used once in command handling, how how can we make sure that they all stay consistent? So that basically is what we're talking about when it it comes to set-based validation. But before we get into those examples, um, let's 
define a set. What is a set when we're talking CQRS? Um, instance? yeah, a set in general is just something that you learn at high school. It's it's just instances of the mm -hmm. same thing, the same class. And mm -hmm. when, you, uh, when right. you would like to create a new uh, instance, uh, you want to make sure that you don't have the exact same instance of that particular class. So right. uh, you want to make sh uh, sure uh, that some things are checked before you add it to the set. So you can validate that instance. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And that defines the survey exactly. validation, right? You just want to make sure it stays consistent. And yeah, so perfect. So um, can you give me an example? So we did talk about the email address. Can you go a little bit deeper into um, that? Yes. Um, you, when a command message come in, comes in, you can just validate it by itself. So you can validate, hey, mm -hmm. is, the, is the email address, uh, is it is mandatory is it there or is it no uh, but you can also mm -hmm. check hey um, does it um, match a certain pattern an email has a certain pattern mm -hmm. and you can validate that um, and right. but in a set based validation you want to to have a broader validation you want to, to validate if this new instance uh, does not already exist in the already existing set so has this mm -hmm. email address been used before for this account, for a account? Sorry. Yeah. Right. Right. So um, generally speaking, in more traditional systems, we're talking about systems that are not using CQRS with event sourcing. Um, usually what happens is that a user can't make any changes to the system until all of the data is saved. So they have to wait probably for a period of time until everything is set and saved before they can move on to the to the next step. So then the user in this case, um, of course, has to wait for the answer coming back. And then the update is completely has to be done before he or she can do something else, right? So that's one of the things that we're trying to um, remedy with you know, CQRS uh, systems that use also event sourcing. Um, so we we talk about two models, which are the command model and the query model. Can you explain a little bit yeah, about in, that? In as well? CQRS, we uh, separate two models. We have the command model, which is the mm -hmm. right side, and that is intended to perform business validation. Uh, the main focus right. of it is to accept incoming commands, requests for changes, mm -hmm. and you want to mm -hmm. validate these commands. And the, the aggregate has to decide if it wants to apply it, an event or not because yeah, of this business logic. Mm -hmm. On the other right. side, we have the query model, which is the, the read side. Mm -hmm. And that is mainly used to respond uh, for, uh, on the queries from the UI. And yeah, you want to okay. do that as efficient as possible. Mm -hmm. And so um, you did mention aggregates, and we'll go back to it and talk a little bit uh, about aggregates in just a second. Um, but before we do that, so now if we're dealing with consistency and we want to, again, go back to validating these sets, can we go a little bit further into that? So how yeah. can we do that? Uh, we have to command uh, the right side uh, where you want to be have mm -hmm. everything um, needs to be consistent. So. There you don't have the problem because the, uh, everything is already uh, there if a new, um, a new aggregate has been added to the set. Um, mm -hmm. But it will take some time to have that persisted in the right. query side as well on, on the read side. And yeah, yes. uh, mm -hmm. that is mm -hmm. typical in, in CQRS. The write and the read side are separate models or could even be separate applications. Right, right. So then um, this is a good thing, though, because then that means that the, the read side is always staying consistent as well as the, the right side, which is the, which is the command side. So you did mention um, aggregates. So let's talk very briefly about what an aggregate is. We, we do have an episode that's all about aggregates, and I, I think it's the third episode of uh, Exploring Excellence. So um, for those of you who don't know much about aggregates, I highly recommend listening to that um, episode. But just briefly explaining an aggregate, uh, can you talk about yeah, that? Yeah, an aggregate bit? is nothing more than a group of associated objects that is regarded as one unit when it comes to data changes. Right. So mm -hmm. um, external references are restricted to one single member of the aggregate, and that is the uh, uh, aggregate right. root. And mm -hmm. these mm -hmm. 
And we do have an, uh, sorry to interrupt you, and we do have a um, annotation for that, which is basically at aggregate, when you have that at aggregate and then aggregate identifier, that uh, defines that's your aggregate root entity and, and so on. So uh, again, uh, sorry to interrupt you, so <laughs> keep going with that. Yeah, with yeah our that's topic, fine. Yeah. Um, and within that aggregate, you have a set of consistency rules that you want to, to, mm -hmm. to have. So. Uh, for instance, you have an order aggregate with order lines, and these right. order lines have uh, order totals, and these order line totals, and, and you want to have the order total itself always be consistent mm -hmm. with the number of order lines, otherwise, yeah, the, the, the numbers don't match. Right. So in... Um to keep the aggregate um, maintainable and compliant to the set of rules, uh, we do have a group of uh, entities that you, you just explained. So these, these are the entities, they have to uh, stay um, uh, within that system that we're having. So instead of then using this big aggregate, then we're basically uh, bringing it into smaller chunks. Yeah. So we have smaller management exactly. group of entities to use and- The order exactly, lines in yeah. this case. So you, you have the or, order line entities, and but the changes mm -hmm. in the order line entities needs, need to bubble up uh, to the order aggregate uh, to keep it consistent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly, perfect. So what if we want to validate a command that creates an account? Yeah, How if, we, if we want to validate a command that creates an account, we want to know, hey, in this case, uh, do we have an account with the same email address? And what we can do mm -hmm. is inter introduce a small lookup table, which contains all the email addresses. And this model mm -hmm. can be consulted when you validate a command. Uh, um, right. To ensure that this additional model deals with the problem correctly, any changes occurring to that model should be immediately consistent. So, right. Yeah. So then, yeah. I'm sorry, so if a create <laughs> uh, account command message is handled, we can validate mm -hmm. if the email address uh, in the in the command message is not already present in the lookup table, and we can do that by using a command dispatch interceptor. Ah, that was my question. So that is the command dispatch interceptor. Very good. Um, so in so in, if we want to, for instance, change the email address when updating an account aggregate, how can we do that? Um, yeah, so the, the account aggregate already exists and you want to choose another email address. And you can do that in the command handler itself. So you have a change uh, mm -hmm. email address mm -hmm. command handler and in this command handler um, method, you can just wire another uh, repository in, in, into it. So in this case, the, the repository of the lookup table. And you can um, you just check, does this email address already exist? If that is the case, you can mm -hmm. reject the command and otherwise you just uh, apply a new event that the email address has been changed. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah. And we can also use this by uh, parameters. Yeah, there are, there are several right? ways to do to do uh, those mm -hmm. uh, checks, um, and you can if you have this uh, check over and over again, do the same thing. You can mm -hmm. also use a param parameter resolver that returns a boolean, uh, and that boolean mm -hmm. is true mm -hmm. if the email or, uh, email address already exists, and. Um, yeah, you can use this parameter resolver all over uh, your event right. or command uh, handlers. Perfect. That makes yeah. life a little bit easier, right? And so um, this is a really, really great explanation. But I also have to mention that you are writing a blog about um, set-based validation. And it's coming out, I believe, next week, which is which is really great. So that we can have all of this information that uh, you just wonderfully explained, um, also in in a written format. And you do have a, um, a GitHub repository as well that has some of the examples that uh, listeners can go to. And uh, yeah, actually, our colleagues right? of uh, right. Exonic are working on a code sample um, repository, oh, and I just added it there as well, so you can just look how to, to do this in code. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect. So um, any other um, uh, pointers that you want to mention in terms of set-based validation, or I think we've, we've covered it pretty much. 
I agree on that. Yeah, <laughs> well, I, I think, agree. Yeah. 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 Very good. Awesome. So we did talk about um, event handlers quite a bit with with set based validation. And one of the other topics that uh, we uh, constantly get questions uh, on is uh, the topic of Saga. So we do have uh, uh, in our trainings and also in our uh, discuss at axonic.io, we get a lot of questions about uh, what is a saga? What 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 is it supposed to do? What is the difference between a saga and an aggregate? So let's let's talk a little bit about that, and maybe we can, um, sh you know, uh, shine some light on some of these topics and make it a little bit clearer for for our users to to really understand the topic of saga because it is it is a complex subject for me as well. It's it's always like, what is the saga? What 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 is the difference between the saga and aggregate? So let's start with that maybe first. So what is the similarities between a saga and an yeah, aggregate? When, when looking at a saga and an aggregate, there are a couple of similarities. Uh, both are stateful. So the aggregates mm -hmm. make decisions on states and they decide what the event to apply. And the sagas mm -hmm. make decisions mm -hmm. on, the pro uh, on, the, uh, on the process. And it, it mm -hmm. decides, okay, I'm in this state now. Okay, I, then I need to send this command. And also... Right. Sagas and uh, aggregates mm -hmm. uh, are using event handlers to update their state. Right. Uh, in, in the aggregate, it's the event sourcing handler. And in Saga, it's a Saga event handler. And mm -hmm. also very nice to know is both uh, Sagas and aggregates have the possibility of using a deadline. So you can okay. say, hey, uh, when uh, nothing happens for a certain amount of time, I need to take some action. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then, yeah, we can look at the differences between sagas and aggregates. Um, the aggregate yeah. will only handle events that were applied by the aggregate itself. So in the event sourcing handler, you mm -hmm. only get the events that were applied by that aggregate. And the mm -hmm. saga will not handle every event there is. No, they will only handle the events with a certain IDs in it that are associated with that saga. Talking about uh, sagas in Axon, because I know we, we have um, a, a, a saga definition in database patterns as well. Uh, can we talk briefly about that? Because I know we get some uh, confusion Yeah, the, that the database well. pattern is already a very old pattern. And it was a mm -hmm. pattern that solves the issue of when you had multiple databases and a transaction has to spend, had to spend multiple databases. And this is not mm -hmm. the implementation that we use in Axon. In Axon, it's more like a process right. manager. And that's right, right. why the sagas uh, will be uh, renamed in the 5.0 Axon version. And we're just going to rename process them process manager, manager yeah, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That will that will make life a lot easier, and it's, it's of course self-explanatory in that case. <laughs> Just their process managers, fantastic. So when we're managing complex business processes, uh, sometimes the aggregates are not enough to manage your business rules, um, and you need to interact with several aggregates uh, to to complete a transaction. So this can sometimes go wrong, right? Things will <laughs> so, go wrong. Always, <laughs> <that's> <laughs> right? <laughs> Let's talk about that. That's true. So you have, have to uh, always uh, need to take into account that yeah, something will go wrong. And um, right. it's not like we have one big um, atomic transaction that can be rolled back. So we really mm -hmm. need to think about right. what do we need to do to make uh, this error state successful again or, or mm -hmm. right state again. So you need to take some compensating actions which you can do by just uh, sending right. uh, compensating commands uh, to an aggregate, for instance. Right. And so uh, when we talk about a, a, a saga coordinates um, the activities that can't be executed in a single atomic business. So we, we talk about the saga spans multi, in, in, uh, multiple aggregates. So when you book a vacation, for instance, uh, the finance department needs to be informed or when a booking is made, then the booking has to be uh, um, has to have been paid so that the booking department knows about it. So it's kind of like this floating component kind of in, in 
in between aggregates. Is, is that a, yeah, a right way a to think about it? a very good way that? to think about it. Always keep in mind that it's about the process that it needs to take care of. It's not about mm -hmm. the business logic. Mm -hmm. It's more about the process logic. So that's that's a really important thing to to remember for me, especially because it's, it's one of the things that I think can um, make that decision making a little bit easier. So when you're thinking about the saga, is a question of um, so does it handle the business logic or does it handle the process logic, and that can actually really. Uh, make it much more clear. So we did talk about a little bit of um, the annotation aspects of uh, what we have um, at, in Axon Framework. Can you talk a little bit about annotation uh, for Saga in Axon Framework? I know we, we did talk about the life cycle and it can have a start and end. Can you tell me a, a few yeah, of those the, the most important one is the Saga annotation, which you put uh, uh, on your Saga class, which make it, makes it a Saga component. It's a spring stereotype. And you can start a saga by annotating uh, a method with the at start, uh, at start saga mm -hmm. annotation. And you put this right. on an event handler, which uh, is the start of your event. So uh, when you say create booking is a start of my, uh, of my saga, the create booking event, or, or mm -hmm. sorry, I, I don't say it right. correctly. I say it in the terms of the aggregate, but it should be... A booking created event that starts a saga. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, we annotate this method with the start saga annotation and with the saga mm -hmm. event handler with an association part right. uh, property probably being the booking ID for the saga manager to know mm -hmm. which saga to invoke. And right. this association property must match a property on the event message that is handled. In this case, the, the, the booking ID. Gotcha. And do we have an annotation for ending the saga at end saga? Or if we don't put any annotation, does it automatically end? Um, no, it will not automatically end. So if you don't put an annotation or end the saga with the uh, saga lifecycle static mm -hmm. method, which are all also there, yeah, um, the saga will be there forever. And you mm -hmm. don't want to have that because right. sagas are persisted in your database. So yes. these, uh, these database rows will will be there forever and mm -hmm. yeah that you don't want to do to uh, carry all those uh, history with you so you yeah. always have to think about when do i end a saga mm -hmm. yep. and for instance, things going wrong right <laughs> yeah in, in in this in this booking example you can say hey if it's a booking is paid i'm done in mm -hmm. this saga mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. and you just have an event handler for uh, the booking uh, booking paid event or whatever, mm -hmm. and you can put the end saga annotation on top of it. Right. Or if you need to do some logging inside that method, you can al also use the saga lifecycle static mm -hmm. uh, method. So you have a uh, static method to end the saga. Okay, yeah, that's pretty easy, straightforward, very good. Um, so um, you can add a new saga to an existing application, right? Yeah, you can do that. How and do you do you, that? Yeah, you, you can just introduce a new Saga component mm -hmm. and configure it to start it uh, to to start uh, processing from the beginning of your event store. In mm -hmm. this case, the tail. It's always the other way around, as you think, because yeah. the events are append only. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if you don't need to to do all that processing of your history, yeah. you can also say no. I want to start it from the head of the event uh, store and only process the new events that come in right. because I don't have these old events here in these new events in my uh, event store because I just introduced a new event. Right. So like every event handling component, you are free to choose and to configure at what moment in time you want to start the processing of, uh, of the saga in this case. Yeah. And one of the things that um, I was thinking about is, so the saga we did talk about that, that handles the process logic and aggregate handles the, the business logic. Can you have a saga within an aggregate or does it have to be outside of an aggregate? A saga is always outside of an aggregate because uh, an, a saga uh, uh, does the business logic. So the, mm -hmm. the, the, the process sorry, um, takes care of the, the processing process. logic. So mm -hmm. it, um, uh, what it does is it says, okay, I have aggregate A and I, and I have aggregate B or, mm -hmm. and I need to 
uh, keep the process in mind. So right. it's not right. inside an aggregate. No, okay. it's outside of mm -hmm. multiple aggregates. So it's ah, always okay. handling the logic of mm -hmm. the processing logic of multiple aggregates. Yeah, yeah. We did talk about it being kind of floating, but I wasn't sure. Can can you ever have it under an aggregate? Which which is a no in this case, right? It always stays outside of an aggregate. Fantastic. Yeah. Do we have uh, test fixtures for sagas in Axon? Yeah, we. Uh, as you might have seen, we do have text fixtures for aggregates, which mm -hmm. are pretty nice to use because you have this given when then style tests. Yeah. And they are easy to read for. Uh, um, non-tech people as well. Oh yes, they're and, so easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and for sagas, we do have the same. So it's just uh, you can, uh, when something happens, then mm -hmm. I expect this uh, to to happen or this uh, command to uh, to be in uh, applied. Yeah, so, you, so you can basically see the outcome of it. So when when you send a command, for instance, what is the outcome going to be with? Uh, it, yeah, with I always call it a uh, black box test. Black box testing. So mm -hmm. you have a precondition, and you expect a certain post condition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if that happens, probably uh, your logic is fine. Yeah. And you don't have to worry about in between state there. Absolutely. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, and so just to wrap up the th this wonderful topic of Saga, which I'm sure will come up in the future as well. Um, so we do have to keep a few things in mind. Can you just, just kind of in bullet points go through those for us real quick? Yeah, there, there's one thing that um, I see a lot happening is that mm -hmm. the first question I, I ask if, if somebody has a question about the Saga, Mm -hmm. Do you need the state? Because if you don't need state, yeah. you don't need the saga. You can just uh, use a plain event handling component mm -hmm. and just handle the event and send a command. You don't mm -hmm. need the saga to send a command. Yes, don't complicate your lives. <laughs> exactly. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and if the process is too complex, like having a, f uh, a lot of branches and, mm -hmm. and in your process, mm -hmm. uh, you should think of another a solution like a BPMN tool or something. It's a, yeah. a business process modeling tool, mm -hmm. which is uh, far more suited to, to do this kind of mm -hmm. jobs. Right, right. And the, the last thing uh, is that is very important is you always need to keep in mind that the aggregate needs to decide whether something is right or wrong. Mm -hmm. It's about business logic and right. that should be in your aggregate. The saga should just coordinate the, the process. I see. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. So in, in short, if you don't need it, don't use it. Exactly. <laughs> absolutely exactly. need it, then use it. That's, it's there to help you. <laughs> that's a very good advice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Any final points that you'd like to mention? No, that's it for me today. Perfect. And thank you so much. And um, I think it's really worth uh, mentioning that, uh, as, as you uh, mentioned earlier, you do uh, a lot of the trainings for Axonic. So uh, you have been doing a lot of the Fastlane trainings. You do the uh, full Axon training uh, program that we have, which is a two-week program. It's very comprehensive. And you do explain uh, Saga's pretty thoroughly during those uh, those trainings. And I think I think we also uh, talk about set-based validation as well during those uh, trainings, right? This um, answer a lot of questions. And so I highly, highly recommend checking those out because uh, I actually did take a couple of trainings with you and you always explain things very thoroughly. And so it's, it's a pleasure to, uh, to learn from you because you just have a very um, straightforward way of uh, breaking things down into smaller pieces, which makes it a lot easier for me, at least to understand. So I appreciate you taking the time today and, and explaining these complex topics to me. Well, I hope you have a great rest of the day and uh, thanks again for your time. And I'm sure I'll come back and talk to you about some other topics in the future. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. I hope you enjoyed my talk with Yvonne. Join me next time as I discover more about Axon and its ecosystem. Until then, have a great day and happy coding.